Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Liverpool had the last laugh at Anfield, beating Manchester United 3 1 and remaining unbeaten in the Premier League. How do they do it? Where did Mourinho's side go wrong? Don't worry, here's the interviews. We've got you covered. So, on this edition of the interviews, we're going to break down how Liverpool beat Manchester United. So before we get into today's video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're going to break down the first half, see how Liverpool look to approach the game, and how United were able to contain them going into halftime with a 1-1 draw. Then we'll get to the second half, see what change United made, and how Liverpool were able to kill off the game. But first, let's get to the starting lineup. So we look at Liverpool, 4-2-3-1, Salah ahead of Firmino with Mane and Naby Keita out in the wider areas and they went with Wijnaldum and Fabinho protecting the back four. Then we get to United more of a 3-4-3. Rashford, Lukaku and Lingard up front in midfield Herrera and Matic and out in the wing back roles and went Ashley Young and Delote. So now let's get to the first half, see how Liverpool look to approach the game and how United were able to muster up a 1-1 draw heading into halftime. So when we look at Manchester United against Liverpool, one of the big problems here is the fact that a lot of people were criticizing Mourinho's decision to play with the back three. They were criticizing his approach. They didn't understand why he looked to play this way. But when you look at the positives of the system, what he tried to do was to nullify Liverpool's threat in wide areas. When you look at United's base shape, they obviously are more of a 3-4-1-2. They wanted Rashford a bit higher. They wanted support for Lukaku. That wasn't the case here because what they did was that they had Mane kind of drifting out to the right to deal with Young and with that being said now you have Klein pushing forward which forced Rashford out into that position. On the rare occasion when Rashford didn't drop deep he would have Matic shift over to provide that cover but for the most part he was disciplined. He did his job to a T and that was, a, that was pivotal. When you look down the left hand side you have Robertson obviously one of Liverpool's key attacking threats trying to push forward as well. Delo played a key role in nullifying him in the first half which is odd as to why he was taken off in the second half but with those two threats nullified and Lingard trying to stifle Fabinho in deeper areas, you questioned how Liverpool would create their chances and they really struggled to from open play. Besides the chances that will break down a bit later on, you kind of see Mane being the key player here, just dropping off a bit deeper, running at the back five, but just not really having any outlets because there was nothing in wide areas and they're trying to cram all of their possession into those tight spaces around those penalty box. When you think about Mane in the opening stages, a Herrera misplaced pass, he's able to drive at the back five, but he plays a pass into Firmino that doesn't connect back to him and it falls to Fabinho who skies his effort over the net. You look into another opportunity that stems from that as well is that you see why Naldon pushing forward. Matic is supposed to step to him. He does step to him. He plays it out to Mane, who is a bit deeper on the left hand side, who again runs that goal. But when he tries to play it into Keita, it doesn't work off. And what you see is Firmino pick up the ball around the edge of the box and again hits his shot over the net. So Liverpool weren't really testing David De Gea. When you think about United's shape as well, like I said, Matic stepping to Wijnaldum, you have Fabinho a bit deeper with um, Lingard stepping to him and then on the opposite side you have Herrera. Herrera did help when Darmian was tasked with um, Nabi Keita pushing forward. If Nabi Keita dropped off, you would see Herrera there. But the biggest problem for United was the fact that you have Rashford a bit higher. You have Delote sticking to Robertson. Lingard is trying to step to Fabinho. And you have Matic trying to step to Vinaldum or working down the left-hand side. But there's so much space in, that, in those central areas for Fabinho to really play those passes when Lingard wasn't close to him. Fabinho dropped off and was able to pick up the ball ahead of the back five. So that is not what Manchester United wanted but for the most part they never really were tested they did struggle on a few occasions when Liverpool looked to press which is why they often kicked the ball over the top because of the way that Liverpool were able to close them down because they're in a back three what you do see here is you have Firmino and Salah flipping between Lindelof and Bailly and then you have Keita stepping to Darmian in the wide areas Mane steps to Young and then again you have Robertson and Delo with Fabinho pushing out onto Lingard 
So United never really had an out ball. Lukaku was struggling to get into the game. He was isolated on the ground. Van Dijk and you had Lover doing a good job in the aerial duels. They had 2v1. So United's main outlet was Rashford, who was driving forward down the left-hand side, often forced Liverpool players into fouls. And when you think about it, that was the big tactical battle here in the first half. Liverpool got their goal the way they did, but again, not enough chances, not really testing De Gea. United never really had an out ball. That was a big problem for them. Even when they tried to press, the pressing scheme made sense. They had Rashford and they had um, Lukaku pressed the center backs. They had Lingard step to Fabinho. They had Delote track Robertson. And then they could push Matic out to the wider area if they needed to. They could push Herrera there as well, depending on how they were shifted and positioned in that area. But when you break down the game, you see that now we have to get to how Liverpool and United were able to create chances and how the way that United really shaped out affected the overall pattern of the first half. Oddly enough, when you look at the chances that were created in the first half, none of the better ones were created from great link-up play or the fact that one system outdid another one. A lot of it stemmed from throw-ins. When we look at one of the first opportunities, it's a throw-in into Firmino, and he's able to nod the ball back nod the ball back to Mane and Mane clips it in between Lingard and Herrera for Firmino and this again goes to show the issues that United had because that one split allowed Firmino to drive at the defensive line and fire a great low shot on goal that De Gea had to push away. Again just a simple combination, a simple split from a nod back into Firmino, no one picks him up he's able to run at goal and nearly get a goal in the opening six minutes. Another opportunity, this one stems from pressing and we see Lindelof push for forward and you have Salah stepping to him and he has nowhere to go so he tries to go back and then as he goes forward you have Mane intercept the ball and play in Salah into that half space. As he gets into that half space his attempt to pull the ball back is deflected by Bayou, pokes it away and it falls to Fabinho. And this is where Fabinho is able to get that shot on goal that falls inches wide of the net. We talked about Liverpool's pressing and how they went about it with Mane sticking to Young, with Salah and Fabinho floating between Lindelof and Bailly and then you had Keita sitting on Darmian so there that was a great product to see how they were able to get that chance and how United weren't really looking to play out of the back because of the way Liverpool were pressing and that would have been a bigger issue if they continued to do that the goal Again, you look at it, again, it stems from a throw-in. The throw-in comes into Firmino, and it kind of shows what the issues that United were having in the sense that Firmino gets the ball, and he's able to pull it back to Fabinho. Everyone is sitting, situated deep along that defensive line at the 18-yard box. Lingard steps out late to Fabinho. You have Wijnaldum sitting on Lindelof, and what happens here is just a simple switch-off. Mane able to run across Young. That should never happen. He should never be able to get goal side of the defender. Young had switched off seconds after making a great tackle on Mo Salah to, that led up to that uh, throw in and he's able to run off him chest it down and beat De Gea from point blank range it's just a simple easy goal to concede and that is something that would grind Mourinho's gears that shouldn't happen there close down Fabinho stay alert Young should not allow Mane to run across him Liverpool are up 1-0 but you'd have to think that Klopp was even more upset at the way that his side conceded their goal because how does it stem yes Allison did make the error but the breakdown in the build-up to that Allison error is even more worrying because it just stems from Ashley Young throwing the ball into Rashford who is able to hold off Nathaniel Klein. He holds him off. He ends up dropping it off to Lingard. Then you have Fabinho finally step to him. He plays the pass across to Herrera who's now able to storm forward. They have a bypass Fabinho. He plays it into Lingard. Now you have that space in between Klein, who was narrow, and Lovren. What happens is Lukaku finally drifted out into that space. The ball is played into him. Lovren has to come across. Van Dijk is watching. Robertson has Delote coming in across him, so he has to watch that. But what happens here is that Lindelof's runs not, I mean, Lingard's run is not tracked. Lukaku plays across and yes, Allison should do better. But what happens is that Klein was bypassed, Kato was bypassed, Van Dijk had no idea that Lingard was coming in, and Lingard's able to poke his effort past Allison and into the net. And that's kind of how United were able to get back into the game. They didn't create many chances. Rashford obviously offered some sort of threat with his pace that led to some fouls. Herrera had an open shot towards the end of the half based on the fact that he was one of the spare 
their men in that midfield based on how they were looking to press and close down markers. Liverpool, they did have chances through Mane running at the defense. They did have chances via throw-in and the fact that United weren't closing down higher up the pitch and they were dropping off a bit too deep and Matic and Herrera weren't really doing a great job of ahead of the back five. But when you break it down as a whole, they conceded easy chances. They were punished from an Allison error and the fact that they were bypassed from a simple defensive last laps but so were United and despite Liverpool's territorial and possession dominance they went into halftime tied 1-1 so now let's get to the second half see what changes Mourinho made and how Liverpool were able to kill off the game the second half saw Mourinho move to a 4-3-3. He ended up bringing on Fellaini and taking off Dalo. What he ends up doing there is that he adds another body in that central zone, helping to close down Fabinho, helping to monitor Firmino's movement ahead of the back five. What happened here is now is that with Fellaini, it does help United in terms of a link-up play for um, Lukaku, who struggled airily and on the ground against Lovren and Van Dijk. Fellaini could offer that threat. He could win aerial duels. He could flick the ball onto Lukaku. That was obviously another way that they could go about it and via set pieces that they could attack if they get them in Liverpool zone. However, making that sacrifice did open up an avenue for Liverpool. As we saw, Rashford did a good job dealing with Klein, but down the other side where Robertson was shackled in the first half, now oddly he was finding space behind a narrow Lingard. This is odd from Lingard based on the fact that he is renowned for being a hard worker, a disciplined defender who's tactically in intelligent but here that wasn't the case and Robertson was able to push forward we saw it in the opening 10 minutes of the second half how he was able to do that we saw Lovren diagonal clipped out to him Obviously, we have Lingard out of the picture. He's able to storm past Darmian and then find Salah, but Salah's shot was blocked. But again, that was a warning sign. Another opportunity we see Fabinho step forward. He's able to play that pass in between Herrera and in between um, Lingard for, um, again, Robertson. He's runs by Darmian once again. But what we see here is Bailly step across and we see Herrera step into that position as well. So Bailly deflected the cross into the path of Herrera. He was able to clear his lines. Besides that, Liverpool had only one other clear-cut chance and it stems from Fabinho who again still had enough freedom to clip the ball towards the box. We have Mane occupying Young. We have Salah occupying the center backs. Salah is able to chest it into the path of Fabinho that takes out Bailly. Fabinho is able to get around four different United players and poke an effort on goal that De Gea should save and he did. Let's not think that United did not find openings. They did find gaps against this Liverpool backline, we saw Ashley Young in the opening stages intervene and intercept the pass. That was going into Wijnaldum. He played it into Rashford, was able to get down that left-hand side. However, his cross to the far post for Fellaini, which would have proved that Mourinho got his substitutions right, was cleared by Robertson at the last ditch. When you think about other opportunities, they really found joy in Jesse Lingard. He played a key role in what they were doing, but the problem with Unite is that the, the production in the final third, that final ball was missing. We see Lingard picking up the ball in behind the midfield. The first First time he was shackled by Robertson who pushed him outside of play but you think about other opportunities where it's just of being guided onto the ball from simple clearances. We saw Rashford poke the ball into him and you see Lingard in behind the midfield running at the back four and he tries to slide the ball in between Robertson and Van, Van Dijk for Lukaku but that ball is intercepted. It was a poor pass. We look at another opportunity where you just simply have Rashford cutting in on Klein, finding space in between Wijnaldum and Van Dijk for Lukaku who's pulling out Lovren. He pulls out Lovren. He Tees up uh, Lingard who breaks across Klein. He gets towards that left channel, but he delivers an overhit cross. That is a, a, a position where you need to deliver a quality cross. He doesn't do that. We look to one more. Herrera flicks the ball into the path of Lingard, who is now just in behind Wijnaldum. He skips past him. Lukaku drifts out to the right. He plays it into him, gets it back, skies his effort over the net. Lingard was getting into good areas. He wasn't finding the right pass. His shooting ability wasn't great. His ability to locate that final ball wasn't good enough as well. And when we get to what Liverpool do after that, they bring on Shakiri. Shakiri moves into that central number 10 role, which sees Firmino move out to the right, Mane move out to the left. And this made sense because now what happens is that you have Robertson who's getting in behind Lingard 
Vanguard. And instead of having Kato run at Darmian, you could have Mane there. You could create the overloads. You can exploit that space. And with Shakiri there, you would think that he played an instrumental role. Yes, he did score the two goals. But in terms of the build-up play, he didn't really affect the game like you would expect him to. When we look at the goals, again, it's a switch of play out to the right-hand side. The ball is switched out to Robertson, who is again in behind Lingard. He picks up the ball, and we see Mane make the run out into that space. What happens here is that if that happens, and we've seen it in the first half, if the wide players aren't tracking the runs, you have the shuttlers pushing out. So Herrera pushes out, and Robertson clips the ball into Mane. The problem here is that you don't want Mane running at Herrera 1v1, which he does. He makes the run across, cuts in on him outside, and he looks to pull the ball back. The pullback ends up deflecting off De Gea and into the path of Klein, but Klein lets it go for Shakiri, breaking into the box, and he fires a shot off Young, and he's able to beat De Gea. So that is 2-1. We eventually see Mourinho make a change. He brings on Martial. United move to more of a 4-4-2 as they look to chase the game. With, ha with that being said, you have Martial on the left. You have Lingard out. Uh, you have Lingard out to the right. So they move to a 4-4-2, but again, we see another goal. This goal this time, it stems again. Shakiri in the build-up to it, but it's, it's, again, what can you really say about it? He gets the ball. The ball is shifted out to him. You have Young step to Shakiri. So Young steps to Shakiri. You see the forward movement of Salah, who drags out, looks to drag out Lindelof. You see Firmino come across and try to play out by. He plays the pass into him. Firmino holds it up, and he tries to find Salah as he bypasses the pass to Matic. He bypasses Matic. Salah doesn't get the ball, but it's Shakiri who latches onto it. And he fires a shot off Bai and he beats De Gea again. 3 1. United are out of sight. Didn't create many opportunities throughout the game. They had their spells, weren't that great in the final third, whereas Liverpool had a lot of the ball. They did take a lot of shots. They, they probably tripled United's shot count, but again, a lot of them were outside the box. But in the second half, with the change, they found space down the left hand side, and eventually that, along with the substitution of Shakiri, ended up being the difference maker. But let me know what you guys think. Is United's top four chances out of reach now? How, who will beat Liverpool? Can they finish the season unbeaten? Are they the favorites to win the Premier League now? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget to upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.